Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Today on our YouTube channel, we have with us Ms. Sonali Malhotra. She is a leading advocate in Delhi High Court and managing head of Sunil Malhotra and Associates Law Chamber. So she is also a top individual lawyer and who has been a legal power list 2020 by the Forbes India. In her academic degrees, she is master's in cyber laws. She is LLB from Campus Law Center Faculty of Delhi, Delhi University. She is BA Honors Economics from Shriram College University of Delhi, from National Law University and HLC in Business and Finance. She is here with us today to speak on law of succession. To hear more on this, let us have Ms. Sonali Malhotra with us. Over to you, Sonali. Thank you so much, Nitesh, for this very warm welcome uh, to your YouTube channel, rather. I would say it's a pleasure, in fact, to be here and uh, further pleasure to be talking on the law of succession because law of succession is something which has always been very close to my heart somehow. I uh, enjoy practicing it and of course I enjoy discussing it also and by way of your channel, by way of your talk today, uh, I'm getting this opportunity so I am very grateful to you for this. Uh, thanks very much Nitesh. Uh, so, so basically now starting with the law of succession, uh, primarily, I would like to talk more uh, from the perspective of uh, both the perspectives rather. One is of students, uh, one is of young lawyers who still have to get their hands on cases regarding succession. And of course, if uh, there are people who have certain uh, things which are which they are handling in their family with regard to succession, I sincerely hope that this talk uh, sheds some kind of light on that as well. When we talk of succession law in the Hindus, it is uh, basically ruled under the, uh, the Hindu Succession Act of 1956. That is the statute which we follow. And when we say the Hindu Succession Act of 1956, it did bring about a lot of, I would say, uh, change from what the situation was earlier on. Now that also, as we gradually talk, uh, we, I will be able to shed light that how the situation changed from what it was earlier to what it became in 1956 to what it stands today in 2021. This has been a very progressive law and uh, even our honorable courts, the way, of, the way they have given the judgments, that will clearly reflect how this law has progressed over time. So firstly, let us understand one thing. The law was very clear when Succession Act came in 56 that they had specific sections which were there with regard to the succession which will be done for the male Hindus and the succession which shall be done for the female Hindus. And in order to understand that, we have various sections. One is we have sections uh, for the male Hindus like section eight, nine and 10. These three sections basically deal with the way the property shall devolve of a male Hindu. Now, when I say the property shall devolve of a male Hindu, it basically means that we are talking of a unfortunate demise of a Hindu male. The property shall devolve on both male and female. Now, as I go further, firstly, I'll explain that when does section eight come into picture firstly. Section eight comes into picture when somebody unfortunately dies interstate. Now, what does it mean that when we say that somebody dies interstate? Somebody dies interstate means somebody is dying without a will. The demise has been unfortunate. And I would also like to add that this is where somebody has not planned succession. There is no testamentary document or a will in order to plan succession. So therefore, the death which has happened without the will is a death, is an interstate death. And once an interstate death has happened, unfortunately, then section eight comes in, it kicks in, the succession opens. Now, when succession opens, this act itself and this section eight itself very clearly talks of something called a class one legal heir and a class two legal heir without sounding too overly technical of what a class one legal heir is and what a class two legal heir is, I would like to explain this firstly, that the section clearly says 
that the word used in the section is firstly that firstly the property will go of the male hindu to the class 1 legal heirs now when i use the word class 1 legal heirs what does it actually mean class 1 legal heirs are son daughter wife mother son of a predeceased son daughter of a predeceased son son of a son of a predeceased son daughter of a son of a predeceased son daughter of a predeceased a uh, son of a predeceased daughter and daughter of a predeceased daughter and wife of a son of a predeceased son of a predeceased son basically when we say without sounding too technical again i would like to say of course these class 1 legal heirs are listed out in the in the act itself but primarily what it means is that all these people who fall in the class 1 legal heir will be given the property in their equal share now this is important i would like to give a very small brief example by explaining a small family tree wherein there is one hindu male his mother is alive his father is also alive his wife is there who will be a widow after his unfortunate demise and say he has two children one a son and one a daughter now in this case in case he dies interstate the property one share will go to his wife one share will go to his mother one share will go to his son and one share will go to his daughter the father does not fall under the definition of a class 1 legal heir so therefore there is no share which goes to father of the uh, so thereby which what it means is that one fourth share has gone to these four members of the family who are the class 1 legal heirs now before i go to the class 2 legal heirs which come as a part of secondly i would like to only explain that let me take an example one more example of say an elderly person who has died interstate who has left behind his wife and say one daughter and unfortunately his son had predeceased him as in the son had died before the death of the father and the son was married having a wife and two children himself right so once that is there then if we see very clearly there are three technically three branches which are there one branch is the wife of the man who has died one branch is the daughter and one branch is the family of the son which we had talked once we were just noting down the class 1 legal heirs that is the son of a predeceased son the daughter of a predeceased son and the wife of a predeceased son but let us understand very carefully that these three people who are left behind as the family of the predeceased son of the person who has died those three people will get one branch that is one third in all in total not one third each so it is one ninth that they get now this aspect has been dealt by section 9 which de which deals with distribution section 9 and section 10 which deal with distribution and the weight has to be given so that has been dealt there and of course re re reading and re reading of these two sections helps us to understand that how the property gets divided even among the class 1 legal heirs so now coming back to section 8 on the firstly aspect which we have dealt with is that how the entire property comes uh, when the person has died interested how the entire property has devolved on the class 1 legal heirs now the imp second important part is that when we talk about secondly in section 8 that is once these class 1 legal heirs are completely absent for an individual for whatever reason then in that case class 2 legal heirs kick in wherein class 2 legal heirs like we gave an example of the father it's also extended family of the father which comes into picture and of course the list goes on which is there in the act then class 2 legal heirs get the properties in the similar manner as 
the class one we have discussed where everybody every branch would get an equal share then in case in an unfortunate case there is no firstly there is no secondly that is there is no class one legal heir there is no class two legal heir then we come to cognates and agnates who are given the property as per thirdly and fourthly which are defined under the act so therefore section 8 section 9 section 10 have to be read together to understand that how the property of a person who has died intestate will devolve on the family members and this has to be dealt with very carefully and very very methodically once as a counsel if you are advising somebody it has to be done in a very proper manner now i come to another aspect the beauty here is that the similar law is not there for women the essence of the law is similar i would say because in terms of women also we have a right which the rights given to the women are equal rather they create equity i think equity that way is a more stronger terminology than even equality for that matter so it does create equity but the law is governed in a little different manner and that is it is dealt under section 14 and of course section 6 which i'll just talk about in a little bit because section 6 talks about the 2005 amendment which was very vital that also that also gives a lot of rights to women i'll come on that aspect first i'll discuss section 14 now section 14 is very essential for us to understand because section 14 was one of the most progressive sections once it was formulated because this gave the right to women to have property in the absolute sense now when i use the word absolute why am i using the word absolute with so much of emphasis there is a reason for that because earlier on before the before the succession act came into picture the women had rights of property only for enjoyment of the property they did not have rights otherwise they did not have rights say to build the property they did not have rights say to sell the property they did not have rights to use the property in whichever manner they wanted and when we talk about property of women under section 14 the law has also because you know please let us go back to the 1956 era when the law was formulated at that time maybe because the fact that there were lesser women who were working there were lesser women who were financially independent who would have brought who would have bought property who would have had the capacity to buy the property themselves so section 14 categorically talks about the property which has come to her by way of will the property which has come to her by way of gift the property which has come to way uh, to, to her by way of stridhan the property which has come to her by way of any any other kind of transfer so property which has come to a woman besides she actually going and buying that property in any other manner whatsoever so she has an absolute right on that property which is a very uh, powerful i would say a very powerful section now the, after dealing with this aspect what is also required to be understood is that for women the way the property is distributed is little different than the way the property is distributed for a man because in in case of in case a woman dies in the state unfortunately then the first person who gets the property would be the husband and the children and of course in the case where the woman is not married or maybe she is divorced and not having a husband and also not having children of course if she is divorced the husband is not there in the picture but if she doesn't have children also then in case of that woman secondly would be would would mean the heirs of the i am talking firstly of the uh, firstly was of course husband and children once husband and children are not there and let us say that she is not a single woman but basically there is, the husband is not there and she didn't have children husband is already predeceased then secondly would be heirs of the husband then thirdly would be the heir then will be the mother and the father of the lady and fourthly will be the heirs of the father fourthly mostly comes into picture when a woman is a single woman and while she is a single woman she has also lost her parents 
so then it comes to the heirs of the mm. father that the property is given and of course lastly is the heirs mm. of the mother if there are no heirs of the father also so this the devolvement of the property in case of a female hindu is different than what we have just discussed and seen in case of a male hindu so that distinction has to be seen then i would like to little bit reflect upon section 6 yeah. section 6 is a very very significant section because section 6 is where the 2005 amendment comes and rests abhi to abhi to when we have discussed this aspect with regard to the fact that how the property of a female hindu would be devolving on the other members of the family what is important also is to see that what right mm-hmm. did she have in a copasnary uh-huh. property now when we talk about a copasnary property 2005 amendment right. brought out this difference because one has to understand this difference that mm-hmm. 1956 allowed her to inherit the property say the property of her father she had an equal share as per section 8 like we just discussed so she had an equal share as per section 8 and she got the property uh, she got a share from the self acquired property of the father however when it comes to a right in terms of a copasnary property it is the amendment which came ahead in section 6 of the 2005 amendment that she was it was uh-huh. said that the woman shall have a right as a copasner she uh-huh. will have a right in the copasnary property now then therefore after that there is a very yeah, is a celebrated it. judgment of the honorable supreme court of 2018 now this judgment given by uh, honorable mr justice uh, ak sikri's bench this judgment clearly said that the woman becomes the copasner in the property by her so it is not exactly to be seen that what is the time when the person who is dying interstate which year is he dying the property point which has to be seen or the the time Haan. period has to be seen is that the copasnary property will become her right so, by her that is something which was a very very significant Haan. development of law Haan. so Haan. i would like to further on to say that the development of law which we have seen from 1956 to 2005 to various judgments which have come after the period of 2005 what we have seen that the hindu succession act has shown immense amount of progress in terms of giving equal share to women in terms of property whether it was the self acquired property of her father where she got an equal share as per section 8 or whether it is a copasnary property where now she has an equal share she can even ask for partition as per section 6 and the 2005 amendment and the law which is beautifully developed after that both of these aspects show complete amount of equity if i may use the word which have which has been done and therefore rights have devolved on women in a similar manner as that of a man uh thank you sonali for this wonderful session we all understand this succession is a uh, such an informative law and has to be on the knowledge of each one of us as in the difficult times of covid the importance of this law has really come up uh, and people are looking after the good lawyers who are there in the succession matters because their loved ones has left with or without wills and they do not know how to devolve on the properties how to take on the shares so for all this they are just looking to the succession law so therefore during these tough times the uh, development of succession law has been more important now so here are some questions which we are uh, there with us and which we want to know that how to deal with them so the first one of them is that how would you like to describe the journey for women under the law of succession this even shall be like 
what what and how they should proceed in what manner so can you please explain on this yes uh, nitish thank you very much for this question because this is very very relevant and especially like you said in this day and time i would like to this in manner that as i was saying in my talk also that when we talk about the rights of women the rights of women are exactly equal to the rights of a man this is something which by way of your uh, youtube channel it will be very good that if everybody who is listening to this will be able to understand and also appreciate that they have no lesser rights and as you just said very very rightly that un- because of the unfortunate demise of lot of young people who had never made even never thought of frankly making a will at this age it has happened and there are uh, very young widows who are there and in that case i would like to tell them that like i just explained as per section 8 the uh, if it is if there is a young widow who is there in in the picture she has an equal right in the property of course like i just explained that if in a family a young person has passed away then her, his mother would have a right on his property his father cannot have because he is not a class 1 legal heir but the young widow and her children if she has any will have an equal right property this has to be understood very clearly by everybody it is not that if even if frankly uh, if she was married only say for a month but because she has the status of a wife therefore she will get an equal share and i am assuming that if it is a case where there is a mother and there is a young widow who is left then you know they will have a half half share in the property so uh, that cannot be underestimated and uh, in fact of course nobody can fill in the place for the person who has gone but uh, this is also a reality which has to be uh, understood i think nitesh you are on mute i am not able to hear you so yes, uh, that you. means that laws are protective in that manner and nobody can take away from the person who is successful to it absolutely okay. nitesh absolutely so uh, the second question which comes to our mind in this regard that what is the nature of property that shall fall upon the male heir who is inheriting the property from his predecessor after the coming of the act of 1956 uh, again nitesh this is something which has been dealt with the on- by the honorable supreme court in 2019 by a very beautiful judgment given by honorable uh, mr justice indu malhotra and uh, 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 their bench had given this very good judgment this is actually something which was always uh, it has not been understood that properly because what happens is that when it comes to the right of a person who is inheriting a property which may have been a copastery property or a separate property of the father then in that case the moment he inherits the property this property is inherited as his own separate property as his own separate property this was in fact also said in a judgment in an earlier judgment of the honorable supreme court of the 1980s of chandra sen which is also a celebrated judgment and both these judgments have talked about this aspect and i would also uh, like to say add one more thing nitesh which you will uh, appreciate that uh, once the honorable supreme court was dealing with this aspect that how and why should we consider the property of uh, which has come on which has devolved on the son as a separate property this uh, discussion which we just had with regard to who falls under class 1 legal heirs was considered because it was said that class 1 legal heirs clearly say that there will be a son of a predeceased son but it will not have a son of a son so it doesn't have a grandson if we see very clearly the grandson is not a part when a male hindu is dying interstate so because of that logic it was said that the property which is which comes to the therefore the property which comes to the son will be his separate property and will not have any kind of a color of a joint property because of the definition of class 1 legal heirs so it is very interesting the way this conclusion has been drawn so uh, just adding a feather into what you have just said the uh, only saying which has been uh, very uh, much popular or prevalent in indians are like that grandfather's property belong to the grandson and not to the son 
so how is that can you throw some light with regard to succession so uh, see grandfather's property belongs to the grandson of course out of love and affection that can be will to the grandson but once we have to strictly follow the laws of succession then i think it will not be possible and it is only possible in a joint hindu family property not otherwise right so you know lot of pe people do not have their clear understanding on this point with this Absolutely. answer you have made them clearly understand that the law is not like that which they are commonly saying as a sayings of their families right so right. Uh, another thing which is very important also nowadays we have seen many couples where the woman is living in completely a strange relationship with her husband and there is absolutely nothing is left in that marriage Hmm. yet she was not taken a formal divorce hmm. in that scenario will she be at a formal loss according to the laws of succession in which way what do you say on this uh nitesh again this question is uh, superbly relevant considering the situation which is there today um i and i will just explain this with an example also one basically is that uh, what is what is to be seen is that women like i i just said have equal rights i'll again come back a little bit on this aspect but before that i would like to explain that if there is a woman who is having an like you just asked having an estranged relation with the husband the marriage is a completely dead marriage the marriage is not working at all i as a counsel you as a counsel we as counsels can only explain to them that they should immediately clarify their status clarify their status as in seek divorce logically so because the moment if and this has happened in one of my cases wherein my client unfortunately she was not in a happy marriage but she had not taken any stand still against her husband and she has lost her life now technically speaking although she was not in a happy marriage although she was uh, maybe scared for her children yet today as it stands her saying or her thinking that she was not in a happy marriage or maybe 10 people knowing doesn't help because when the law of succession will open her husband like i just explained as per section 15 her husband will have one third share if she has two children so he will have one third share in the property and nobody can stop him because she did not have the time to make a will if she did not have the time to make a will then in that case the husband is still a legally married husband although it was an unhappy marriage so what i would like to only say again is that if somebody is living in such kind of a marriage where there is absolutely the, like i said the marriage is a dead marriage then it is better that you kind of have a space, clear cut status of being a divorced wife because the moment you are a divorced wife then your husband is no more your husband and therefore he doesn't have any right in the property then only your children will succeed to your property and you not your husband so uh, again and again the emphasis is that women have equal rights in property and because they have equal rights like we always used to study in law school also that once you have rights you have responsibility so you should carry that responsibility also frankly of taking care of your property like here nitesh i would just like to add one small thing the other day i was watching uh, jane austen's uh, sense and sensibility you know those british era movies of that time they also reflect because in because even if we see in that, that time in these british era movies these movies show a lot of misery which the women used to go through and that misery was primarily because of the fact which i also personally feel because they were not econ economically empowered they did not have any right to property so you know one dialogue which i can just borrow from that movie the, there are two main characters in the movie one is elinor who is a lady and another is edward my friends who would have watched the movie or read the book would be knowing so there you know elinor and edward are talking and they are trying to have an acquaintance and once they are trying to have an acquaintance edward just to make elinor feel happy tells tells her that you know i also don't have a choice of occupation in life because she cannot take a job she cannot at that time women were not working at all even in england so she says he says i also don't have a choice of occupation because his mother wants him to do a particular thing so elinor very beautifully says although this may be the similarity but you will inherit your fortune and we cannot even earn ours now that is a very hard hitting sentence right. so the women 
at that stage whether it was in britain or whether it was in india they this is i'm talking about a much earlier century so therefore they could not inherit the fortune of course earning a fortune was a completely different thing altogether because they were not working also so now what i want to only uh, reflecting on this i would just want to say this that the economic empowerment now has happened to such a large extent because of the fact that women have equal rights in property and if they have equal rights of course you know they should utilize those rights and they should take it on with a great amount of responsibility thanks a lot and i think with this we are uh, concluding happily concluding this session wherein a lots and lots of informative things which has been told by you about the law of succession and it has been very well placed by you to be understood in the simplest of its manner that how one should follow and especially with regard to the women that how they should be always be looking that how and when they have to go for the succession and where, where are their rights and they are so much protective that nobody can take them away at the same time they are also to be like vigilant for the laws and they cannot say that something which has not been done by them they cannot have a right in them so absolutely yes and uh, with this we would like to end this session sonali and soon we would like to have some more informative sessions with you uh, in the nearest possible manner thank you thanks a lot absolutely it will be lovely thank you very much nitesh for having me thanks a lot